Close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. As for any other thoughts that may come into the mind right now, just let them go by. Think of them as visitors coming into the mind that don't have anything to do with the work you're doing. So you focus on your work, because there is work that needs to be done in the present moment. When the Buddha talked about being in the present moment, it was never for its own sake or simply to hang out here. He said, we stay here because there's work to be done with the mind. The mind has lots of unskillful qualities that need to be abandoned and skillful qualities that need to be developed. And you don't have don't know how much time you have to do that, but you do have right now to make the most of my right now. Stay with the breath as it's coming in going out. That's your anchor in the present moment. And then try to develop some mindfulness, in other words, remembering to stay here, and alertness, watching what you're doing, and the results that you're getting from what you're doing, and then ardency, trying to do it well. You can experiment with the way you breathe, long, short, heavy, light, fast, slow, deep, shallow. See which combination of these things works best for you right now. In other words, it feels good for the body, and it's easy for the mind to follow. That way you're strengthening these qualities in the mind at the same time that you're resting. Exercising the mind is different from exercising the body. Exercising the body, you have to go out and jump and run and move the body around. But to exercise the mind, you have to learn how to keep it quiet. And then as you do that, mindfulness gets developed because it protects the quiet. Alertness watches over the quiet, and ardency tries to do the qu this quiet well. That's how these qualities get developed. And then you can apply them to other areas of life as well. So not only are you developing a good place to stay in the present moment, but you've got something good to take with you as you go on into the future. As I said, we don't know how long the future is going to be, but we do know that life ends in death. And you want to be prepared for that. There's aging, there's illness, all these things that can threaten our happiness. If our happiness depends on things being just the way we want them. But if our happiness can depend on the skills we develop in the mind, then even though things may not be going as we want them, the mind doesn't have to suffer. That's one of the advantages of getting the mind still like this, is you can train it in the qualities that can protect it, even as aging, illness, and death come, as separation comes. You've got something solid you can depend on inside. 